And Professor Clements, as we consider one-dimensional motion, the kinematic equations, how they get applied to uh, various situations. So, taking briefly a look at the uh, the four kinematic equations, but you really should look at my other YouTube video uh, for the kinematic equations. Now, we'll do a little bit of problem solving with the kinematic equations. Um, this uh, illustrates you know, something we might want to calculate, which uh, team will get to the finish line in the shortest time. Um, we'd have to assume they're on a river where they can move in a straight line and that they have constant acceleration to use the equations, but it yeah, gives you a little bit of a flavor of uh, some possible application. Uh, before we get to the kinematic equations, let's take a little calculation, look at a calculation here. Um, this is different than we'll use the kinematic equations for, but it's worth the sort of an intermediate uh, consideration. So we want to calculate where is this object located after six seconds. We're told that its average velocity is four meters per second, and we're going to let it start at zero. So where is this object going to be after six seconds of motion? Well, we can actually use distance equal rate times time for this calculation because we have the average velocity this rate number will be a fixed value during the whole time. You have to be careful of this. Many of the kinematic examples you cannot use distance equals rate times time. Be careful of this. Common error for students. Um, in the kinematic examples in general we're going to have situations where the rate is changing. There's going to be acceleration. When the rate changes it is not appropriate to use distance equals rate times time. This problem is uh, a special case. We're given the average velocity 4 meters per second. Well, if we start at 0, we've got 4 meters per second multiplied by the time. That gives us 24 meters of uh, progress. So our uh, situation here is our position is at 24 meters at the end of uh, this interval. Um, for uh, the displacement or position that we're at, the x value, and uh, looking at uh, average velocity for a given time, you know, our x value is a straight line equation, and y equals mx plus b is the math form of a, a straight line. Uh, so here we have the displacement equal to zero if we start at zero plus the velocity multiplied by time. Then we, we get a straight line in that situation. Um, we do have a constant acceleration here in this, uh, in this graph. But let's go on. So in the kinematic equations, you need to know what the variables uh, stand for. So x is going to be a position. Um, velocity, I'm going to stop talking about average velocity and now we're going to use instantaneous velocity the velocity at a particular time the velocity at one instant of time the instantaneous velocity and our symbol V will represent this velocity and the symbol A will represent acceleration so X for position V for the velocity at a particular time and A for acceleration and the acceleration will be constant so the other YouTube video shows how these uh, equations are derived. But our first kinematic equation, final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Final position equals initial position plus one half. Uh, final velocity plus initial velocity multiplied by time. Final position equals initial position plus initial velocity by the full time interval multiplied. Plus one half times acceleration times the time interval squared. Don't forget to square in equation 3. And equation 4, the square of the final velocity equals the square of the initial velocity plus 2 times the acceleration times final position minus initial position. Again, the sub naught here means the initial case at the start of the problem, at the start of the time interval. Um, and all of these equations demand that A is a constant. If you ever have a problem where there's changing in the value of A, for example, a car steps, somebody in the car steps on the gas pedal, but then later steps on the brake, you're going to have different values for the acceleration. 
and you must work the problem in steps, one step, one stage. When you have a certain value for the acceleration, do whatever calculations are needed, and then do the second part of the problem with a different value of the acceleration, and do whatever steps are needed, and then somehow combine the results. That's occasionally going to happen. Most of the time, our problems will just have a single value of the acceleration. Uh, so an example here, initial velocity, seven, 70 meters per second off to the right, and a acceleration of minus 1.5 meters per second squared. What's the final velocity at a time of 10 seconds? 10 seconds is the uh, designated time interval. And it's not stated here. You're just going to go ahead and assume, unless it's stated otherwise, you're going to assume this acceleration is a constant. Um, so what equation could we use? We want to calculate the final velocity. Equation 1 is going to be helpful. Uh, equals the initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. We have these numbers. So the 70, the minus 1.5 times 10. Doing this multiplication first, when we do calculations, multiplication is more important than addition. So we have to multiply here first. So we get a factor or a term of minus 15. So 70 minus 15. The final velocity after 10 seconds is 55 meters per second. This is reasonable in that it's smaller than 70. Our acceleration is opposed to the velocity, so we're decelerating. We should have a final velocity that's less than the initial velocity. Um, so let's go a little further here. And I just noticed I don't have my uh, video recorder going. So I guess it's still recording. OK, that's good. I didn't see my picture in the. Uh, in the frame. So oh, we'll keep on going. We'll check it later again. Anyway, here's an airplane. 70 meters per second off to the right, decelerating at minus 1.5 meters per second squared. Time of 40 seconds. We end up at 10 meters per second. And we want to calculate the displacement. What equation would we use? We have the initial velocity, that's 70. We have the final velocity, that's 10. We have acceleration, minus 1.5. We have the time of 40 seconds, and all the units are proper. We have meters per second, meters per second, meters per second squared. We have seconds for the time. What equation would you use? Pause, take a look at the possible equations, and pick one. Rejoining, so here are the list of the variables. I'd recommend that you do this when you solve problems. Make uh, Write down the symbols with the values that are known. We want to know the displacement. Let's simplify the problem. Let's say where the plane touches down on the runway is the zero of the coordinate system. Uh, so x naught b zero. So which equation would you use? We want to calculate x. And now we know x naught. You should say there are three choices. This problem has a lot of extra information. You know, it has some extra information such that there are three possible choices. Most of the time, there will only be one equation that allows you to solve the problem in one step. Um, so pick your favorite and go ahead and do the calculation. Pause and uh, calculate the value of x. I chose equation 2 uh, at first to calculate. It's pretty straightforward. x naught is 0. We've got a 0.5 for the factor in front of the average velocity for the average velocity calculation. Um, final velocity, initial velocity, we're going to add these together to produce 80. Times 0.5 would be a 40. Times a 40 is 1600. For equation 3, you must be careful to put in the negative value for the acceleration, and you must be careful to square the time. And I came up with the same result. And we'll see if anybody in class uh, uses equation 4. You should get 1600 meters. When the, uh, we have rockets launching off of the Earth, that's motion occurring on a big scale. Can we use the uh, kinematic equations to uh, do calculations for rocket motion? It's going from 0 meters per second on the launch pad to 7,700 meters per second in 10 minutes, roughly. Can we uh, do the four kinematic equations for the motion of the space shuttle? 
we can calculate the average acceleration. That's just final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time. We need to convert minutes into seconds, but we could do that calculation. The four kinematic equations cannot be used because the acceleration is not constant as the fuel is used up. Uh, roughly, there's the same amount of force with the uh, amount of fuel being burned per second being constant, uh, but the mass is much less. So the acceleration changes, the acceleration increases. We cannot use the four kinematic equations. Just uh, an example where you have to be careful. Uh, another case here, um, 30 meters per second for the initial velocity, final velocity is zero. And we've got some conditions here, dry pavement, wet pavement, as what the brakes can uh, and tires can uh, help us out with in, in slowing down. We want to find the distance uh, after we press the brakes on to when we stop. So which equation would we use? We don't know the time. We don't know the time. Which equation would be used? We should say equation 4. V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AX. We want to calculate X. Let's let X not be 0. Uh, we don't know the time, so equation 4 would allow us to uh, do that. And we'll do other examples of those types of calculations, but um, in this uh, particular section, <coughs> these four kinematic equations, that's our main point. The acceleration must be constant during the time interval. In a particular problem, you'll make a sketch. You'll write down the values of the variables that are given. You'll inspect the equations here to see if possibly you can find one of them where you have the unknown listed, but you have no other unknowns. So we just want one unknown. We don't want two unknowns in a single equation. That would be the most direct route. So signing off, if I can figure out how to get back to my controls here, and we'll uh, let you go to work on your own um, practicing of these equations. Long time to say goodbye. Goodbye.